This week's movies, The Girl, Any Day Now, and The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey. You must be Mr. Boggins. No, you can't come in, you come to the wrong house. What? Has it been canceled? No one told us. Can no, nothing's been canceled. Oh, that's a relief. Directed by Peter Jackson, The Hobbit is an adaptation of J.R.R. Tolkien's first Middle-earth fantasy novel. In his review, A.O. Scott writes, In The Hobbit, Bilbo Baggins sets out with the wizard Gandalf and a posse of dwarves to battle a fearsome dragon. Spoiler alert, they do not kill the dragon. Although, spoiler alert, they eventually will within the next 18 months or so. Because, spoiler alert, this Hobbit, which is migraine alert, 170 minutes long, is the opening installment in film critic Suicide Watch Alert, a trilogy. Nope. The comparative playfulness of the novel could have made this Hobbit movie a lot of fun, but over the years, Mr. Jackson seems to have shed most of his exuberant, gleeful, obnoxious whimsy. The meeting between Bilbo and Gollum is the one fully enchanted piece of an unexpected journey. Even if you aren't aware of the apocalyptic importance of Gollum's precious ring, you feel that a lot is at stake here. Bilbo's life and integrity, Gollum's corroded soul, the fate of Middle-earth itself. If only some of that feeling animated the rest of the movie. Why don't we have a game of riddles? And if it loses, what then? If it loses, precious, then we eat it. <laughs> if Baggins loses, we eat it whole. Fair enough. Your daddy's running to a streak of luck. Hey, let's celebrate. You come back with me. Stay overnight. To Mexico? That ain't far. It's only a couple hours. Written and directed by David Riker, the girl is about a young woman in Texas who loses a child to foster care and begins smuggling people across the border. In her review, Manola Dargis writes, There are early flickers of drama, but what at first comes across as a tale of dawning conscience increasingly starts to feel rigged. The larger problem is that Mr. Riker wants to have a social realism and his sentimental uplift too. The shadowy Mexican streets and the desperate people, the main character Ashley's bitterness and ghastly carelessness with other people's lives, pull the movie in a direction that evokes the films of Jean-Pierre and Luc Dardenne with their stories of moral awakenings. What am I supposed to do? But the ease with which Ashley surmounts her terrible choices regrettably tugs the movie elsewhere. You know that place. It's where the cost of a white character's new consciousness is paid for by black and brown lives. Once they get hold of you, you understand? You won't spend the rest of your life taking care of that little girl. Huh? This is my home? Yeah. This, this is your home. Directed by Travis Fine, Any Day Now concerns the efforts of a gay couple to formally adopt a child. In his review, Stephen Holden writes, when Alan Cumming turns on his beaming grin in Any Day Now, he conveys such intense, unguarded emotion, you almost want to avert your eyes. Yeah. Marco didn't ask to be born to a junkie, didn't ask to be different, didn't ask for none of this. And I just don't see why he should be punished anymore for stuff that ain't his fault. Any Day Now is an outraged, unblinking portrait of institutionalized homophobia three decades ago, when the prevailing court opinion about gay adoptive parents, no matter how devoted, was that exposing a child to a homosexual environment was harmful. In the eyes of the law then, and even today to a considerable extent, a foster home or an institution for the disabled was preferable. There ain't no books here. You want me to make one up? Mm-hmm. OK. I like happy ending. <laughs> Don't we all, sweetheart? <laughs> OK. Once upon a time, there lived a boy whose magic was known throughout the land.